Okay, hey guys, so let's finish up your chapter 3 test uh, correction, starting with number 21. Okay, so 21 and 22 have the same directions. It says graph the inequality on the coordinate plane. Coordinate plane, right here. Um, that phrase and the fact that I gave you an x, y axis tells you that this is going to be not graphed on a number line, that it's going to be a diagonal line, horizontal, or vertical. Um, and one way you can think about the problem is to, instead of thinking, uh, looking at the problem and having an inequality symbol, you could think of it like it was an equal sign. Don't ever actually have an equal sign in any of your answers, but that's the one way you can think about it. So with 21, we have x less than 2, because um, the coordinate plane and the directions and the fact that I see the x, y axis. I can imagine that it's, instead of having a less than symbol, I have x equals 2. Well, in terms of lines, what we know about linear equations, x equals a number is actually the form of a vertical line. The vertical line that goes through the x value of 2. So this is actually what I'm going to try to graph, is a vertical line through the x value of 2, and 2 is right here. Um, but I need to figure out what kind of line. Is it a dotted line or is it a solid line? Well, the inequality symbol in the original problem is a strict inequality, just less than. That right there tells you this should be dashed. So let me go here, my line tool. I'm going to draw, draw a dashed line through x equals 2. Oh, that's not dashed. Let me go back, fix that. There is my dashed line. That looks better. Okay, so that's only like half your problem. The other half is picking a test point. So this is where it gets hard. Test point. We have to pick a point either on the left side of the line or the right side and plug it in. Um, if it works, then we know we can shade that side. If it doesn't work, we shade the opposite. Remember, I always like to choose nice, easy values. So I always, if, if I can choose 0, 0, as long as that doesn't lie on the line, then I'm definitely going to do that. And, at, and 0, 0 is right here. It's the origin. That is not on my red line. So I'm just going to plug that in. Well, in our uh, inequality statement here, we don't have the y. There's actually a secret y. If you rewrite this uh, inequality, we have technically 1 times x plus 0 times y less than 2. You don't have to think of it this way. You can just think of it, well, I know my y is always 0 no matter what. Um, but if you are having trouble figuring out how to plug in a test point, rewrite it this way. So to test points, we're just plugging in the x value for the x variable, plugging in the y value for the y val variable, and seeing if we get something that's true. So in our case, we'd have 1 times 0 plus 0 times 0, and I want to know, is that true? Is it really less than 2? So 1 times 0, that's 0, plus 0 times 0 as well, that's also 0. Less than 2, question mark. 0 plus 0, that is definitely 0. And 0 is definitely less than 2. So it works. What that means is that any coordinate point I choose on the left side of this line will work and will make a true statement. So we're going to shade all here on the left side of the line. That is your final answer. Is the graph with the correct line graph, the x, y axis with the correct line graphed and the correct shading. Okay, number 22. Number 22, same directions, but this one's a little bit harder. Now we actually do have both x and y variables um, visible in our inequality. If you remember, this is actually lesson 3.5. I told you to solve for y. We're going to solve for y. So let me go over here to the right-hand side, and let me show my work. We have 4x plus 2y less than or equal to 4. Well, to move everything away from my y, we have to look at what's on the same side. Well, 4x is definitely on the same side as 2y. I'm going to move this first. There's a secret plus sign here in front of 4, so to undo it is subtraction. I'm going to subtract 4. 
from both sides. This leaves me with 2y less than or equal to 4 and minus 4x. They are not like terms. You cannot subtract them. So you just write them next to each other. So you have negative 4x plus 4. To get y by itself, we're undoing a secret operation of multiplication, and we're going to divide by 2. This gives me y less than or equal to, and notice I have not changed this inequality symbol. It stays the same because I have not multiplied or divided by a negative number. Uh, let's go back and start simplifying. Negative 4 divided by 2. Well, a negative divided by a positive is a negative. 4 divided by 2 is 2. The x carries along. Uh, positive 4 divided by positive 2, well, that's positive 2. So I'm actually graphing this line, y equals, and you can imagine that there's this little equal sign here, uh, equals negative 2x plus 2. Now, if you remember, the first point you plot is the y-intercept. This y-intercept is positive 2. So I'm going to stop, draw a point. Then I have to use my slope to draw other points. Well, it's negative 2. That's also the same thing as negative 2 over 1. Because it's negative, that means from my y-intercept, I'm going to fall down two blocks, or two units, and run to the right one. And I'm going to stop and draw a point. But I like to draw three points so I can have a nice line. So I'm going to go back up to my y-intercept, and I'm going to do the opposite. The reason I'm going to do the opposite is so that I can get a point that's somewhere above my y-intercept. Opposite means instead of falling two, we're going to rise up two blocks and run to the left. 1. Now, I need to know, what kind of line should I connect these dots with? Should it be a solid line or a dashed line? Well, that well, comes from our inequality. In the inequality, it is less than or equal to. That right there tells me it is a solid line. So I've got my line tool and changes to solid. And we're trying to connect the dots as if we would normally. Boom. There you go. That is your equation of this line, but we're not done. You're not done until you figure out where you have to shade. So we have to pick a test point. You guys know I like easy points. So if possible, I will choose 0, 0 as long as it's not on my line. 0, 0 is this origin, so the two x axes cross. That is not on my purple line, so I can definitely plug it in. And we're going to see if we get something true. Now, I'm going to plug it into the original inequality. You could plug it into the um, solved inequality for y, uh, but just in case you make a mistake, it's easier just to plug it into the original. So this means instead of writing our y variable, we're going to write 0. Instead of writing our x variable, we're going to write 0, because it's 0, 0. So this gives me 4 times 0 plus 2 times 0 less than or equal to 4, question mark, because I don't know if it's true yet. Well, 4 times 0, 0, plus 2 times 0, 0, less than or equal to 4. 0 plus 0, 0. And that is definitely less than 4. So that means any line, any point that falls below, any coordinate point that falls below our line works. I'm going to shade all this. It doesn't have to be super pretty. You can see I'm kind of just shading enough so you can tell. That is your final answer. Okay, number 23, I actually had made extra credit, um, but we are still going to go through it anyway, just so you guys can see how to do it. It says, the basketball team spends 20 minutes running laps and at least 15 practice or discussing plays. So that's some important information, 20 minutes, that sounds pretty important. Um, and at least, at least there's an inequality symbol. 15 minutes, that sounds pretty important, too. Um, and then it says, let's see, practice lasts 1 hour and 45 minutes. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, write an inequality to represent the amount of time to work on other drills. Okay, well, other drills, I don't know what they are. So to represent something we don't know, we have to use a variable, and you guys know I love x. So other drills represent x. 
Well, if the entire practice lasts an hour and 45 minutes, then that has to be on the right-hand side of my inequality because all of this has to be at least an hour and 45 minutes. Well, everything else is just in minutes. So let me convert one hour and 45 minutes to just be minutes. Well, there's 60 minutes. Let me kind of go over here. 60 minutes and one hour plus our 45 minutes. So this gives me a total of 105 minutes. And let's just add what we can, because it added up is supposed to give me my entire practice. So I have the unknown amount of time for my other drills, plus the 20 minutes elapse, plus the 15 minutes of discussion. This right here is the first part. Um, the other part, to get the other half part of your extra credit, was to solve the inequality. Well, let's combine like terms. 20 plus 15, so we have x plus 35 less than or equal to 105, getting x by itself, undo addition with subtraction. Subtract 35 from both sides. This gives me x less than or equal to 70, or 70 minutes is what I have to use for other drills. This again was extra credit, but in case you wanted to know what it was like or how to solve it, here you go. All right, guys, that's your entire test. Use what you need, correct your mistakes, and prepare for your retake.